everyone. Welcome to Unapologetically You with myself, Tulsa, and the beautiful Kelly, where we discuss all things health and wellness. We use science-backed tools to support you, your family, and hopefully provide thought-provoking conversations to get you to really think about the ways that you can look after yourself and the ones you love. Today's podcast is a really special one because we we kind of do this, but we're going to like lengthen what we normally do if you know what I mean so I'm not going to give all of it away (laughs) so you have to listen to the whole podcast obviously but if you'd like to support us head over to our patreon page where you can support us for a price of a small cup of coffee and if you just wanted to support us for free give us a review like comment engage with us subscribe if you haven't already on spotify or on youtube and we'd appreciate if you share this podcast if you enjoyed it so without further ado hi cow Hello, Tulls. How are you going today? I'm very well. How are you? I'm well. As, I'm, I'm also well. Good. I'm good. Yeah, if you're, yeah. If you're looking on um, YouTube, she looks absolutely amazing. There's like effortless. Yes, well, right back at you. I'll see that sweater. We don't call them sweaters in Australia, but I'm... What do you I call them? In the UK. Jumper. Long sleeve top. <laughs> Jumper. <laughs> Jumper. Or a long sleeve top. Yeah yeah no it's cozy it's warm it's raining outside gorgeous. And the color is gorgeous is it we've yeah. had a bit of rain in fact we're possibly getting a cyclone uh within the next two days possibly i've never lived in cyclone territory before so i'll let you know how that goes that's funny well yeah there's is been it? quite a chaos <laughs> chaotic weather here for the uk i'm actually really? really glad that we're not in the crux of it we're not in the like yeah. part of it but there's just yeah. like more and more storms coming around but snowstorms or like rainstorms rainstorms okay what's they've going named on? them all <laughs> they've like yeah. come up with new names okay. there's ones in okay. scotland and the scotland's weather's always been a little bit crazy Has and it. harsh yes I think so. Have you ever been? No. Have you ever been to Scotland? No. Is that on your bucket list? Oh, God. It looks amazing. Of course, I want to go. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't been. What? Yeah, no. I've been to so many places around the world and I haven't been. I need to go. It's on my my list. Is it somewhere you could drive to? In about five hours, where I am right now, probably about eight. Stop and you've never been. That's amazing. You could drive there in five hours. I can't even drive to another state. Oh, yes, I can now. But when I lived before, I couldn't even drive to another state in five hours. Oh. But now I can 15 minutes. (laughs) But it's easier with planes, I feel. Like nowadays, it's just easier if you just hop on a plane and you can literally go from London to, I don't know, Edinburgh or something like that, right? Yeah. Well, exactly. You could do that as well. But you still haven't done that either. <laughs> You're making my point easier for me. Okay, I'm going to move on. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Grilling questions. Okay, what's your biggest win this week so far, Kelly? My biggest win this week is uh, Jill's staying here still with us and we're just we're just having such a lovely time together it's just so lovely to be able to spend time with a friend and we don't get tired of each other's company and we oh. you know the conversations go deep and the conversations are funny and the conversations are everything in between it's lovely that's a big win I definitely to have a type of friend like that where you just don't get tired of one another I think that's really special yeah. really really special. Mm-hmm. And what made you smile this week? I I saw a surgery this week. I I don't know if I, that should be my biggest smile, but it was um, <laughs> done by a surgeon who was just very uh, very well known, very good. I got asked if I wanted to watch the surgery, so I did. I'm okay with other people's blood. I'm fine. I am the girl who will save your life if you something happens. But if I start bleeding, pass out straight away. What? Yes. I know my own blood sends me That's so arrive. Yeah, but you're good in a anyway. crisis. It's good to know. Yeah, yeah, I'm your girl, absolutely. Um, and I got to watch a surgery. So there you go. That was that was. What did I say? <laughs> what made me smile? I don't know if I should change that. That makes me sound really no. Don't weird. do it. I want to know what the surgery was. Uh, uh wrist. 
surgery. So oh. it was, yeah, intricate. Yeah. Intricate work. Yeah. yeah. And how long was the surgery? Hour and a half. So not terribly long. I know some surgeries go for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. But no, not this one. It was intricate and there was a lot of, um, there was actually carpal tunnel. So it was cut through the hand as well and a lot of scraping away. It was interesting because I work with the rehabbing of injuries like that after it's done, but I don't necessarily see the surgery. Mm. And um, this doctor, this surgeon was explaining it as he did it like this is this is what I've got to scrape away. This is what I cannot touch. This is why I've got to move this. This is why I have the surgical team around me and they have to have really, he just explained everything and it was, put a smile on my face. <laughs> I wish cool. I could change that, Tull. It was no, pretty cool. Because me, I'm, I, I don't know if other people are a fan of Grey's Anatomy. I started watching Grey's Anatomy because I loved ER. This is showing my age now. Loved ER. And then, what was it? Yeah. Grey's Anatomy came along and I was like, yes. they're just trying to be another version of ER and it doesn't really make sense. And I was addicted. I was addicted because of the oh. storylines and the people, but more so because of the surgeries. And Shonda uh -huh. Rhimes is such a talent when she creates these stories, which incorporate real life examples. Like I heard about 3D printing before it, I actually heard it in the paper, in the journals, in the, you know, health and wellness space. And I was like, well, you wait heard a about it I'm... through Grey's Anatomy? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's just like, wait a second. It was, it was, because the thing is, for me, I was like, the stuff that's happening in America, sometimes stuff that's happening in Australia doesn't necessarily filter down. And But let's be honest, mm -hmm. if you're not in that space, if you're not in the surgical space, that's mm -hmm. where things kind of evolve and then it filters down into, oh, okay, so now what can we do? Like, then we've got 3D printing in Formula One and you're printing all sorts of different things, but now you're printing organs and, you know... Mm -hmm. um, vassals mm. and all these different things you're like this is insane mm. this is insane technology mm. so it was really interesting for me that was just one example but mostly it was just like you've got love stories you've got people who die but I loved the surgeries I loved watching what was happening why it was happening I love the medical side of things for sure okay maybe you should have been a surgeon no I'm not that it's clever. never too late no you're not no just like watching I like to watch Okay. Yeah. I don't know what it is. <laughs> yes, same as me. I don't think I could do it. No? But have you I used though? to Yeah, when it first started when it first came out, is it still going? Well, it's nineteen seasons in and I'm I've kind of lost interest. I've kind of like I'm yeah, done. Yeah. I'm I'm over it now after nineteen years. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe if you watched it, you can't binge watch nineteen years, but if you watched no. it but you Back can in the day binge when it watch the early out, yeah, you, this, early they're, days, they're literally yeah. live right now on Disney or something like that. But you can watch yeah. the early ones and they're very, very good. Good content. Oh, that's when I watched it. Yeah. Yeah. You were easy. Yeah. Doc McDreamy and McSteamy. You know, yes. that's I, the good yeah. old days. I don't know if they're in it anymore. The good old days. Exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is your intention for this coming week? Any more surgeries planned? Uh, <laughs> no no more surgeries planned <laughs> not to not to be in and not to watch um intention 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 you tell me yours so, so while I can think about one. Oh no we both hit a wall no go I have right. one I have one okay so this uh -huh. is gonna be uh -huh. kind of like out there but I'm gonna put it out there anyway because it's our podcast and okay. whatever the hell we want right <laughs> True. <laughs> so this more no so last night I did a meditation so if anybody who hasn't like this ver this various conversations about meditation and in the last podcast if you listened to it I had a conversation with Samuel Hart who's a primary school teacher and he basically um, mm -hmm. talked to me about how he felt about meditation then he grilled me because we don't really know each other that well we just kind of came across each other's paths and then I invited him on the podcast basically because I thought it was interesting to have him on and he asked and me about what I thought about meditation and I, I kind of made that segue into my happiness within book which is here somewhere <laughs> and so I explained look it wasn't really sitting in meditation something that was easy for me I couldn't really do that 
But what I did do is try and find different forms of breath work or meditation or yoga so I can remain present. And for me, that was meditative, mindful, right? It's mindful in the present moment. So last night I've been doing this new, um, it's not new. It's actually something that has been created by Dr. No, Deepak Chopra and Alicia Mm -hmm. Keys. So they, Alicia Keys. Yeah, they collaborated on a meditation series, a 21 day meditation series. It's, it's owned by Deepak Chopra, I'm pretty sure, but she obviously collaborated with it. So it's all about the divine feminine. And I completely forgot about this particular uh, meditative series. And my dad was looking for something in the evening. So I was like, why don't we do this? So she'll have her own little bits of wisdom and why this is important to her. Deepak Chopra then um, enhances that in terms of a spiritual way. And then they go into um, meditation. So the meditation mantra every day, the meditation mantra is different for 21 days. The meditation mantra was Aham Brahma. Aham Brahma. Aham Bra- Spell that Brahma. one. Br- Brahma. So P R E M A. Aham Brahma. Aham Brahma. Okay. And I'm okay. going to botch the reasoning, the rationale of this up, but basically it breaks it down to I am love. Oh. And for those people who know me, who know my story, who haven't read the book yet, go check my book out. That's within. Go to Amazon. It's super cheap. Um, last year, when I went to um, Costa Rica, I had been given a mantra, Aham Brema, Aham Prakasha. Mm-hmm. I am universe. No, I am love. I am the universe or I am God or something like that. It's something like that. Um, I'll try and um, write it properly in the description box. So then it kind of reminded me. So then all last night, I was kind of just like, aham prima. And for those, like I said, who've read my story, I've had a quite difficult time to actually open myself up to love and to be in that energy of love. But since I've kind of opened the gates, your floods come through right and so I was like well why can't I this morning my intention was why can't I see others as their own divine beings so every time I meet somebody how can I see them in the highest and best light so you can see them as God if you believe in that you can see them as a divine being a higher entity like see them as the best versions of themselves does that make sense yeah, that would be amazing if you could do that. And what I'm do you think? Try. The... I'm going to okay. try. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Wish I thought of that one first. Okay, <laughs> my intention is nothing so lofty. I was saying to Jill before. I feel like it's Thursday and it's Tuesday. Mm-hmm. So no, I just want, and I said to her, I just want to get through the week. And I <laughs> and I feel like that's still my intention, just to get through the week. But that's boring, far out. What's my intention? But why do you want to just get through the week? What I'm is tired. it? I'm tired okay. already. Just um, you know, um, the mental drain that you put on yourself more than anyone else puts on you. Because when I see clients all day, and these are re rehabilitation. Uh, age care not age care dva uh, veterans mm-hmm. um whatever you do they love it whatever you do they love it they love the social aspect of it i can chat yeah clearly um but you know the you want to see a result mm-hmm. so you put the pressure on yourself to get the result that you want for them not necessarily what they want for themselves but you know because they don't think anything's ever going to change yeah and I know for sure that sometimes it can so the pressure you put on yourself is a mental drain Mm. and so physically I could probably go out on the bike and do some kilometers on the bike but mentally I need a rest okay you bring up I think I say it every week though no but you bring up a really good like start you like Kelly 
kind of I hit Kelly sometimes with a little bit of a curveball all the time, pretty much in our podcast. And I say, well, this is our topic, right? And she's so freaking busy that sometimes she doesn't have a chance to even check out what the upcoming podcast is about. So she's a trooper. She's That's super true. flying off the seat of her pants. <laughs> and she does it really, really, really well. I think so anyway. You can tell us if she doesn't. <laughs> she does. She wears rose-colored glasses around me. It's true. <laughs> so basically, hot topic of the day is about our own health and wellness. And Kelly, I wanted to ask you, okay, there are areas in your wellness that have been depleted, that are depreciating. Mm-hmm. What would you currently focus on then? So you know physically you're good. You know phys- uh, mentally you're probably need a little bit of scope emotionally spiritually you know what would you focus on say for example your intention this week is just to get through the week but how can you just get through the week by focusing on those like examples physical mental emotional spiritual like what's your main priority would you say I know for sure my main priority is eating well and making sure that I eat well or eat like I I didn't really get an opportunity today to take a break until I got home and Jill had made this beautiful poached salmon salad uh thank goodness though because I was hungry and I would have just reached for something I could tear open right Right? yeah Yeah. so I know that eating because eating affects me and it affects my skin and we all know that story I don't know if we all know that story but I did go through a period of time when I my skin was terrible and it ended up being rosacea uh, which the doctors just gave me antibiotics for and which made it worse. It made it better, but then as soon as I finished the antibiotics, it made it worse. It actually... It was just masking the problem, it. right? It wasn't actually... Yeah, exactly. ...the root of the problem. Didn't at all. And the root of the problem done by my own research ended up being my liver and um, the overabundance of probably toxic heavy metals, viruses that like to eat those heavy metals and mm-hmm. and all the neurotoxins released through the life cycle of those viruses affected my skin and I'm lucky it only affected my skin because it can affect your brain it can affect your heart it can affect uh, it, the viruses get trapped in cysts and lumps and tumors in your breast on the way from the liver to the thyroid <clears throat> and I I got none of that So I I just had a breakout on my skin, which to me was terrible Mm -hmm. um, because, oh, man, it changed the way you look at people. It changed the way you socialize with people. Very hard to look people in the eye and know that your face, your face was, my face was sore. I don't want to show you a photo of what it was, but I just looked so tired and so achy. And I was tired and achy. Um, Anyway, it was my liver. And so I know very well that as, as hard as I've worked on um, clearing my body of as much virus and toxic heavy metals as I can, I don't know what level it's at. So if I eat poorly, mm-hmm. and not even poorly, but just if I eat you know, on a social level, so if I go and have a chicken schnitzel, mm-hmm. I, I don't know how much it would take for my liver to be overloaded again. So that eating well is so important to me. And do you think the stress from so physiological stress affects the the liver function on a certain day? Does it doesn't matter what you eat? Do you think that that it affects does. it too? Me personally? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So a lot of the function of the liver, I believe, from what I've read and talked to people about, it also um, creates the body's or yeah capacity I guess to make quality hormones so um the the quality of your hormone more blood hormones or the uh levels as in the quantity the quality and the quantity of your hormones uh comes from that good food intake yeah well mental plays a big part in that as well so your mental yeah. capacity your emotional capacity plays a big part but it's like having all the ingredients to make a really nice cake um and when you've got all the correct ingredients in the in the correct um you know um <laughs> so you've got like your yeah, well, and yeah your... so um the amounts the correct amounts oh gotcha yeah. um you make a really nice cake. But if you try to make a cake and you go, ah, oh, I've got no flour, I'll make it anyway. 
Okay. Okay. That's that's going to be a really weird concoction of a cake. It's going to be a version of a cake, but that could be your hormones. So if you're trying to make cortisone, if you're trying to make adrenaline, if you're trying to um, make a concoction of hormone and it's kind of like not quite enough testosterone, not quite enough estrogen, not, you know, it, it's a really poor quality version of what your body runs on. It's a poor quality fuel. I really so, like that analogy. I completely understood that. Yeah, I really do. Good. I don't know how you did, but. No, I, I get it because, and, and I really appreciate the breakdown of it and the simplicity because I feel like it can get really overly complicated and, and you can actually bring in the science aspect of it and it can just baffle. And there's no point in doing that, in my opinion. I feel like. No, me either. From you explaining that hormones will be hormones they will they are supposed to intertwine and provide a specific function provide a specific mm -hmm. outcome but if you're not providing that nutrition minerals um within your body well then they are just not going to be as effective at creating like that perfect cake because you just said that perfect version of a hormone and if we think about mm. it we are genetically we're reproducing right we're reproducing ourselves yes. we're reproducing yes. every single cell in our body so our hair is not the same hair as it was 10 years ago our skin is not the mm. same skin as it was seven years ago we are constantly regenerating but what happens when we regenerate when our body naturally does this it takes a pattern and it says oh i need to replicate this pattern I need to replicate this pattern. Okay, that pattern I now replicate again. But if you take that one pattern and you replicate it 10 times, how quality, how much of a quality is that pattern going to be? Now, if you've had yes, strong okay. genetics, if you had good stable foundations and a really good blueprint, that copy should be a mirror. But usually for evolution, they try and upgrade. That's the whole point. You're trying to upgrade. So it doesn't stay the same blueprint. You are upgrading. But when you cause stress, when there is a lack of nutrition, um, good quality substances that you're putting into your body, aren't you degenerating that blueprint? So instead of causing an evolution in your cells, mm. you're now creating devolution. De is that a word? I know what's wrong with my of that word um does that yeah, make sense like i'm i'm yes, pretty sure like yeah. i'm not a scientist i don't know the intricacies of it but if we're supposed to like our dna naturally copies itself but we're supposed yes. to copy itself to be a better version of itself but with the viruses and the yes. diseases and all these things it's actually breaking down the quality yeah absolutely it yeah. does and the body can only copy like you say what's in front of it yeah, And so um, me, my body needs to have a really good blueprint or I need to work on it. Otherwise, that rosacea pops back up really easily yeah. on my skin. Um, and that's just one example. Rosacea yeah. is yeah. my example. But yeah. um, there'd be plenty of others. Oh, for sure. For sure. And this is a really good conversation, I feel, because like you've been under a lot of stress with a new business. You know, you are incredibly busy. And one of your strategies is to eat well. But like most coaches, if you are busy, like most busy professionals, any busy mom, whoever it is, it's just like, you know what? I'm so tired, but I'm hungry. I'm just going to open this packet or I'm just going to put this in my mouth because you're hungry. And your mm. instinct is to feel that um, to be satiated, but those mm. that you're immediately re reaching for aren't going to satiate you and your hunger. So, you no. know, as a coach is what, this is why I'm coming from a coaching perspective is we both know as coaches, these are the foods that actually give us that satisfaction, give us that protein, give us the minerals, give us the nutrition, help us sleep better, help us have more energy. But we have succumbed to moments where we're like, you know what? what is quick even when have you ever done this when even when you're making a nutritious meal and you're hungry like you haven't eaten like you're nibbling and you're like I'm just gonna eat this really quickly because I'm really hungry but I'm still making my food so I've even Absolutely. done that where I'm trying to make yeah. the nutritious food but now I'm filling myself yeah. up with like nuts or a few crisps yeah this and that or shortbread biscuits <gasps> and oh. I say that from 
<laughs> oh, yeah. Say that from experience last week. Okay, yeah. so one of your strategies would be mm-hmm. um, eat healthy. That is almost like a non-negotiable if you can. But when you are yes. incredibly busy and you don't have the angel gel cooking you food, amongst oh, no. the chaos... What are the other two things that you would try and stick to maybe on a daily or a weekly to try and get your, your health and wellness back up, even amongst the chaos? I am not as good at Tulsa as meditating at meditating. Um, So Tulsa will do it and I will listen to it. I will listen to people meditating. It's like watching people exercise. (laughs) <laughs> but it's but it's still helpful I to me that. The, <laughs> I'm like did you try the like? video did you look on YouTube yeah. to do it? she's like no I just watched you <laughs> <laughs> oh okay so we're the same you and your mom and I um so but it does help it still helps it still sort of subconsciously gets in there and it just it's calming um you know what I listened to watched a little bit of the other day's mudras and you're the one that introduced me to them I love mudras I don't know what that one I don't know what that is okay so that one according to tiktok According to um, TikTok? (laughs) Yeah. And you know how I got it? Because it came up, told something on TikTok. I I haven't looked at TikTok for months and months and months and months and months. Well, something of yours came up and I went, oh, maybe I was, I don't know. Anyway, I looked at it, but it didn't go to straight to you. It had a mudra thing beforehand. Oh. And then you were after it. So, um. Anyway, that's what it was, and it was for your heart. So you get your pointer finger, put it on the the first joint of your thumb, that's yeah. it, and your pointer finger and ring finger on the top of your thumb. Ooh. That's it. And this that's is your heart? You. This is for heart. So it will help your heart immediately but not for long term. So you can't do it once and go, done. Okay. You know, so, or but, maybe yeah. you can marry that up with Aham Prima, the mantra. Yes, that's the ha- exactly. I am love. I am love, and it's referring to heart anyway. So yeah, that might be nice. Yeah, and the little finger is just relaxed, like you're going to have a British tea. A British tea, I love that. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Yeah. And how do you feel when feel you nice. did that? Did you hold it for a well, little? Well, I feel time? relaxed. I did. I did. Just held it and then just listened to the rest of the video, and then whatever, and then you came on next, and then I was just doing that so just the mudra yes helped relax me um the words that came along with it from the guy it was a man who was talking about it I definitely did like oh you gotta breathe is what he said breathe in breathe out and oh my gosh it made a difference to me so you can know I just felt myself relaxing or tension tension leaving the body I don't know if I was relaxed but tension was leaving leaving my shoulders yeah well we carry a lot in our muscles we carry a lot in our body so I feel like just having those moments of breath work the mindfulness of this present awareness holding that mudra getting guided and I have created a 21 day mindfulness meditation on my channel on um, on YouTube so check that one out if you want a free meditation and you're like I don't know what to do it's a series of meditations that kind of go how would you want to sit how would you breathe? How would you focus on something? And they're very, very short meditations. They're between like five and 10 minutes. So even if you think, oh, I don't have time. Exactly. Mm, You do. Exactly. Mm, And it's just kind of like taking off the baggage of the day, you know, because you've put on quite a lot of other people. Great way to describe it. Energy, right? Yeah. And how do you kind of like strip away the baggage before? Or you kind of go back and and a lot of people find that having a shower at the end of the day helps them de-stress as well a shower yeah, is all, a shower. It's very metaphorical isn't it it's like cleansing mm-hmm. your body and getting rid of that baggage in another oh, way a second wash away beautiful ritual I love it yeah yeah okay Absolutely. so remind me again so we've got our, our thing okay so pointer finger, finger goes on to the f- yeah there and, and then tall man and ring finger on the top of your thumb oh perfect That's and it. then relax the pinky finger and relax the pinky okay, yeah, can beautiful so if you're watching us on youtube <laughs> this is That's how it, it is 
Okay, beautiful. All right, I'm going to try and keep it as I'm on yeah. this path now for the rest of the time. Okay, so okay. I know this about you, but I don't think other people know this about you, but you're Ooh. a coach, you're a mother, I you're am. a wife, you're always mm-hmm. putting your needs above others. And other people are going to recognize this in themselves. How do you strike a balance between taking care of your athletes, your clients, your family, and yourself and other areas there that you can improve ways that you can take care of yourself so firstly how do you prioritize yourself (laughs) amongst everyone else who wants that energy everyone else who wants a part of you and including me including this podcast including you know but how can you actually go right you know what this time is for me how often do you do it in one of our seasons was it season two and we talked about boundaries that was a real learning curve for me really i would never done it before yeah I mean it's kind of a new thing for that to to be said that you know for boundaries to be to exist and they might have existed in an ethereal kind of sense before but there wasn't a word that described it or that made it acceptable Mm. okay but creating boundaries was and the ability the strength to speak up, the ability to speak up. I always had the ability, but the strength maybe is, is what yeah. I'm trying to get across uh, to to say I need to go and have a magnesium bath. Mm-hmm. I need, I'm going to do this and just ignore all the horrified looks on everyone's faces. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, what would be people's reactions be? Well, speechless really because it was new. Oh, I definitely did not. Yeah. And I, I, is she okay? Is she just, is this, you know, <laughs> and I was okay. Don't I'm... like change. Like people, yeah. genuinely humans don't like change, but it's so inevitable. So for them to go, wait a second, I know her, this isn't her. What is mm. going on? Has the world yeah. gone mad? <laughs> <You> know? I know. <laughs> I know. And then when we were all together for so long in COVID. Oh, yeah. That, Yeah. I need a little bit of a time out there as well. Time out probably the way to describe it. I feel like a lot of people did change themselves, the perspective of themselves, I feel, especially during COVID. It was very much an inner reflection. Um, And and it went from inner to outer. I mean, it's not everyone, but generally speaking, because of the chaos in the world and because of the forced confinement, a lot of people had to either I don't know distract themselves very 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 well or go inwards and figure it out right um but that's amazing so okay this is another follow-up question from that question okay Mm -hmm. how can you take care of yourself this week okay I need to have another magnesium bath a Mm -hmm. soak magnesium soak Mm -hmm. So I have a nice shower and I wash myself with this beautiful silver colloidal wash and um, makes you feel very moisturized, and, but very, very clean as well. And then soak, immerse yourself in a magnesium flake in a nice, not too I hot bath. I yeah. It. I really want an outdoor bath. I've got the ocean, oh, but yeah. I want to have you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I want to have the whole a big, ocean. <laughs> I've got the whole ocean, but I want a big, like not a spa, but we could get a magnesium pool. And we are thinking about doing that with this little house, but this little house can't, we can't do too much with it. It is a little house. Uh, it's a little beach shack. Um, yeah. Okay. Away from renovations, talking about magnesium, I'm going to have a magnesium bath. I've I, it's been really hot here mm. and I need to stay hydrated with something that's a bit better for me than water. And for me, that is a celery, celery juice, cucumbers, pineapples are also really good for me. It's not, I don't know if it's the same for everyone, but for me, they're hydrating. Yeah. I mean, um, and they've got the right the sweetness of it. electrolytes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So hydration. Mm-hmm. and magnesium bath there you I go that. I'm going to make sure that. I do this week okay well you already said a challenging extreme exhaustion as you were um 
working in sport and you know throughout your life so I'm not going to go back to that one but I wanted to ask the last question Mm -hmm. what is what is your biggest lesson when it comes to taking care of your own wellness it could be physically mentally emotionally spiritual what is what is the biggest lesson or the biggest win I would say the biggest win is that you can't just do one and expect all the others to fall in line oh they just don't so for however so hard long, you try however hard you try however hard you try <laughs> right so you can't just uh do sukodu sudoku sudoku that's it yeah. um and i'm talking about a lot of the veterans i work with now and they'll do sudoku all all day to make their brains think but they don't move or they don't hydrate or they don't eat well mm. and all those ducks aren't going to line up if you do Sudoku, just do Sudoku. So it, thinking back in my own life, if of the times I was studying, did I look after myself physically, spiritually uh, as well? No. Mm. The times where I've looked after myself physically, which has been most of my life, um, did I do everything else? No, that was a lesson learned as well. But you can't just do the spiritual, emotional mental stuff as well and expect your body to be physically yeah I so, agree. yeah that's my biggest lesson yeah it's like yeah. creating that holistic approach and I'm really glad that you said that because it kind of reassures me that you know you can do a little bit of this you can do a little bit of this and you can change it up a little bit because for women in particular I'm going to use the like menstrual cycle and the monthly hormone concoction that we try and create it doesn't mm-hmm. happen daily it happens over a course of 28 to 30 days and one week is not going to be the same as the other week your mental wellness may need a priority like right now I'm prioritizing cardiovascular fitness I never do extreme cardiovascular training because I'm so busy with strength training or yoga or spirituality but I feel like I've still incorporated the meditation I'm still incorporating the yoga but I'm doing that extra bit of push regarding my cardiovascular fitness um girl I'm just helping I don't know why I'm drawn to it but I'm being I'm listening to the signals of my body and I'm succumbing to what my body is craving. But I think that a lot of people are very attuned to that when it comes to nutrition, but less likely attuned to that when it comes to mental wellness, spiritual wellness, emotional wellness. Like what are your emotions telling you right now? And you don't need to change them, but how attuned are you with what your body needs right now? You know, you could be mm-hmm. emotional and you could crave that chocolate. And are you going to give it to yourself? Or are you going to deprive yourself because of some other story that you're telling yourself? Or as I said, I've woken up in the morning. I usually meditate. And the last two days I was like, I don't want to meditate right now. I don't feel like meditating, which is a big thing for me. It's, it doesn't happen very often. So I went straight to the gym and I just went on the rower and I'm my rowing time's improving. <laughs> Good girl. But you can also... um Let's just clarify that cardio is not red zone, high heart rate, nonstop. And it's not just high heart rate and then slow down and high. The high heart rate is not cardio and it's, it's, it can be performance based, but you do it for five minutes a week, broken down into several workouts. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that 130 to 150 heart rate that you might do on the row for an hour or an hour and a half. 30 or less time. It doesn't have to be 30. All right. It doesn't have to be an hour and a half. It really, really doesn't. 30 minutes can do it. But you can, when you're good at meditation, like Tulsi is, and I'm not, but you can row and meditate at those low heart rates. You can. Yeah, of course, because you're focusing right. on your breath. You're yeah. focusing on where you're inhaling. You're focusing on your exhaling. You're focusing. For me, I don't do calories. I do where the average 500 meters is I'm constantly looking and tracking between what my body is doing and how it's performing on that monitor so I don't Mm -hmm. I won't zone out like that I won't just watch mindless movies or tv shows I'll have NFL on the background because obviously we've got the NFL playoffs at the moment 
But the, for me, I'm like, what is my body wanting? How do I need to push myself today? Or do I not need to push myself? And do I just need to sustain between here and here? And I like that you brought up the heart rate. I feel like a lot of people forget what zone they're in. And please, 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 when you're on machinery, there is a massive difference between the heart rate on a machine and actually having a heart oh, rate yes. tracker. So if you ha- if you can afford it and you're working out a lot, get a heart rate tracker, please. Monitor yeah. it and just look at the zones. And then you're going to start to identify, do you need to push yourself? Have you had excess stress at the beginning of the week? Do you really need to push your body at the end of the week? Or can it be mild? Can it be sustainable? Could it be that you just need to go out for a walk for an hour in nature? Mm-hmm right? Mm -hmm. That could be Mm. a cardiovascular workout. Okay. So I'm going to ask one last question and it could be anything that you've already said today. What is your health motivational tip of the day? Uh, Being in Australia at the moment and temperatures so high, so warm, uh, hydration. It I, when I see people who aren't hydrated, you can tell the mental differences, the physical differences, but that, those cognitive differences. Mm. And so even in cooler weather, if you if it's too cool to want to drink mm-hmm. or, or stay hydrated, the cognitive differences are huge and your performance differences are huge when you um, try to be um, coordinated. Yeah, de- agree. Dehydrated. Yeah. Agree. And, so and many, people, Stay hydrated. many people forget that when they're drinking too, right? And, and I don't know people that purposely put a glass of water beside them to try and drink. As they're drinking, they're still dr- hydrating because it's not the same yeah, thing. Okay. <laughs> it's not the no, same. No. So it's almost like, <laughs> yeah, you can go out for a drink and you can enjoy yourself. But if you really do enjoy it, stay looking after yourself at the same time too and it won't be like yeah, oh I'll drink two liters liver. tomorrow it'll, fi- it'll be fine I'll flush it out it's like it's gonna take time mm. for your bloodstream because remember each time you put a toxin in your body your body's remembering trying to go back to the, its blueprint go back to the, the the pure regeneration of that cell but if you're not giving it enough it's gonna not regenerate as well but that's what my tip would be. I'm going to jump on the bandwagon of that. I would just say, stay hydrated, but also go mm. through your mindfulness, go through your meditation, listen to your body and what it needs. If this week your body needs mindfulness or yoga, take the guilt trip off your back and just do mm. that. It's not the end of the world. It's like saying, I can't have a burger and chips because my health will deteriorate. You're not having it every day. You're not having it for every meal. You can have it once, just like with training, you can just take yourself off that treadmill for a week. You can take yourself off that cycle and just give your body what it needs, because that could be the nourishment that helps that regeneration for the following week or the following week and, and things like that. So Kelly, I'm going to leave you if you have time today, or I know this week, you're definitely going to do a magnesium bath. So I am. Yeah. I'm going, I look, I have time. You know, yeah, good. I'm not crazy busy. I must over exaggerate. I no, you I work don't. longish are hours, you that type so I don't work I hard. Don't think you are though. <laughs> no, look, I, I, even Jill said to me, "You work so hard." And I'm like, have I given you that impression? Because I don't work hard. I love every minute of my day. I get to spend it with some very, very cool people with some very, very cool stories. But the hours are kind of long, and that's my own decision because I don't rush people along. Yeah. So, you know, I boundaries. Oh, some of the people. What was that? Boundaries. I know. Boundaries. <laughs> oh, I started a boundary with one lady in particular today. I put a timer on for 35 minutes and I'm I'm trying to cut it down to 20. Now, 20 does not sound like I can do a lot of um good, but I can. You that can. that's I can do a got a lot of good yeah. for someone in 20 minutes, especially when they're 96 or 102. You know, yeah. so 20 minutes. They're puffed out, man. They need a little oh, yeah, rest. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 So oh, that's I, amazing. I've just got to, yeah. But I, you know, I finished working with one lady today and I sat down in the rocking chair beside her. We we're both in rocking chairs. Very cool. And and we just started talking. So, you know, my day was joyful. How lovely that I get to do that. Yeah, that's true. She's a 96-year-old. It's and she used to own the George Hotel in 
the George Ho- I have to find out where it's not in Wales, so you might not know it, but I'll find out where it is. Oh my and then gosh, you can you visit and I'll send people. photos. I do, I know. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, no, I cut you off. What thing. It's not, I was going to say, it's not taking away the fact that you don't work hard. I feel like you can still love what you do, but still feel a little bit depleted. And that's not taking away that you don't work hard or don't love what you do. It's just saying that striking that balance. It's striking that balance just to say, I absolutely love what I do, but I can't give everything to this. I can't give my mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual health away from this. I need to guard some of the things that I need to nurture for myself. And then when I come home for my partner, for my kids, for my friends, for myself, right? So it's almost Mm. like keeping everything in a big bubble but then also going how big is the bubble that you're prioritizing with work because you're doing a very good thing especially where you're um evolving the business right now but it's almost like well then there's going to be little bubbles of other people kind of wanting that and then there's going to be a bubble of you too so how how big is that bubble right now maybe you need to expand that your bubble right now so yeah maybe I do yeah yeah I'm gonna leave the question and answer time (laughs) We are going to close out this podcast. And Kelly, thank you so much for sharing all of the vulnerable stories, sharing your own experiences with us, allowing me to grill you. Obviously, that was always a pleasure (laughs) because I said I've said this before in a podcast. I always learn so much about Kelly. Every time we speak, I'm constantly learning. And it's one of the beautiful things about our friendship. Yes, I I learn a lot from you too, but I think you give me a lot of opportunities to answer questions and I don't get to ask you too many, or I don't ask you too many. You give me opportunities to do so and I sort of talk about myself. I love that. So (laughs) we're going to have to do um, a podcast asking you the same or similar questions. Yeah, let's do it. You have, yeah. Let's do it on the next next podcast. Should we? Should we just reverse that? Okay, everyone, I would love to join us for the next <laughs> podcast. If you found this useful, please share it with your friends and family. We would love for you to be a part of our community, whether that's on Spotify or Patreon or YouTube. All of these links can be found in the description box below. And I hope you've enjoyed it today. Sending you so much love, Cal. And thank you so much, everyone, for listening today. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.